Revival and awakening. That's really everything that you're seeing right now when you turn on the news or you turn on your social media. I mean, it's everywhere. Revival is, is breaking out across college campuses, different things. You just can't hardly not see it. And so um, in case you haven't seen it, maybe you're not on social or you, haven't, you don't really like to watch the news. I totally get that. Um, we just kind of want to get you up to speed on what's going on. So we're going to show you this little clip on what's going on. So we keep hearing about this, there haven't been many news stories on it, but it's all over social media, on TikTok actually, of all places, and reports that people are flying in from Singapore and New Zealand to join whatever this is. And so we thought it'd be worth finding out, what is it? Allison Perfader is the student body president at Asbury University, and she joins us. Hey, Allison, you're so nice to come on, thank you. What, it, what is this? A Bible verse that we've all been sharing with each other is Habakkuk 1, and the Lord says, Look at the nations and watch for I'm doing something in your day that you wouldn't believe if you were told. And it's happening and we can hardly believe it. My understanding is this began in a completely conventional service and a boy got up and started talking about his own flaws. And then it just, something changed in the atmosphere and it never ended. That's completely what happened. Um, so here at Asbury University, three mornings a week, we have chapel at 10 a.m. sharp for seemingly no reason at first. On Wednesday, February 8th, it didn't end. And what's been happening here since Wednesday is there's a, there's a young army of believers who are rising to claim Christianity as their own, as a young generation and as a free generation. And that's why people can't get enough. It looks like we're on the cusp of another great awakening. The wave of a revival that began at Asbury University two weeks ago is showing no signs of slowing down. It's spreading to other college campuses across the nation. Students are praying for more of God and asking him to ignite a fire in America. CBN's Mark Martin has the story. Flames from the Asbury University awakening have spread like wildfire as the Holy Spirit continues to fill students' hearts and minds across the country. 15 straight days of revival culminated with Asbury hosting the 200th anniversary of the National Collegiate Day of Prayer. Revival has spread to schools in Alabama, Kentucky, Missouri, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Texas, and Virginia. And I think there's a move of God that's happening. There's a revival that's happening. And I wanted to be in the presence of God. I wanted to just be in among believers. And um, we need it in the climate of the world today. It doesn't matter the age from the youngest person to the oldest person. God wants to move in, in this time. And you know, when the world is at its darkest, that's when the light shines the brightest. Isn't that what we want in our church? Isn't that what we want across the churches in America? It's just God to come alive and his people. And that's what we're seeing happening. And so as you're watching all of these things, I mean, my immediate thing is just like trying to figure it out. You know, what, what God, what are you doing? You know, like what's going on? And so you see all of these college campuses breaking out and God's spirit is just falling because they're seeking him. And that's what we want. That's what we want, a fresh revival. And so when we talk about the word revival, you know, it can be overwhelming because we're not sure what that is. And so we're thinking like trying to figure it out. But then when you start hearing the testimonies that's coming forth out of these students, out of these college campuses, you know, I watched a testimony of a young lady that just said, I was so overwhelmed with anxiety and depression. Like I suffered with it my whole life. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's so true. Like the world that we live in is so junked up and it's so just the weight of the world just wants to press you down. And so she was just saying, but these last 10 days, my life has not been the same. My life changed. And I'm like, yeah, Jesus, you know, that, that's exactly, we know the answer. And it was just beautiful. And then I heard another uh, a young man uh, give his testimony and says, I don't even know what's happening. Like, I don't know. I just know God's moving. And he's like, I don't even know what that means, but I think I'm called to be a pastor. And he's like, and I don't know what that means. <laughs> and I'm like, that's awesome. Because the fact is, is when God starts moving and stirring your heart, don't try to figure it out. Don't try to like figure like what, what's that look like and how's that going to look? And that's how kind of how my brain works. But it's like, drop all of that and go where God's going. And I think that that's the biggest thing that God wants to do. God wants to awaken 
Pastor Brad told us two things this year, awakening and revival. And I'm telling you what, that's what God wants to do. God wants to shake our hearts a little bit, get us outside of our box and what we think we know because we don't. Because the fact is, is we're not God. We need to be so in tune and so in step. And you just let, up, let go of ambitions and just seek after him and let God do what he's doing and then see what he wants to do next. And that's the same thing that that kid was saying. You know what? Not all of us are called to be pastors, but all of us are called to be a mouthpiece for the Lord. All of us have a testimony. All of us have a word that we can send forth to somebody. Everybody needs hope. Everybody needs hope. They just don't know it's in the name of Jesus. But you and I, believers, we know. And so we are not all called to be pastors, but we are called to be mouthpieces. Amen. And I believe that's what God wants to do this morning. He wants to shake us up. He wants to shake our hearts and he wants to shake our souls because he wants us to come alive into what he might be doing. What he might be doing next may look different than what you thought. And are you willing to step out? What he wants to do is shake you up a little bit and says, if I throw the dice and it looks different, are you willing to step in it anyway? Are you willing just to go forward and just whatever I call you to do, if I call you to stand up and just praise, are you going to be okay with that? And I feel like that's what's shaking up our church right now. I feel like we don't know from moment to moment. We have a plan. We have a plan. We do not wing it around here. But, but we're going to allow God to change the plan. And you, we're going to allow him to move and, and, and speak and how he wants to do his thing. Because the fact is, you know, you can go to Asbury and it's awesome. But you don't have to go to Asbury to experience revival. Revival is not a place. It's a person. And his name is Jesus. And if we're willing to surrender to the spirit of God, we're going to experience revival. And we may not know how that looks, but I tell you what, when he gets our full attention, then he can do whatever he wants. So there's two reasons that maybe you're here in this room, and I feel like God called you for one of two reasons, and I feel like he called you that you need revived or renewed, or you need to know God. Because there's a shaking and awakening that happens. And so I want to just talk to you real briefly about what revival is. Because the revive, and that word, revive, let's just break it down. It's the Latin word, and the root word just means to, it means again, and then viver means to live. So it just means to live again, and we've been talking about that in that song. We've been talking about coming alive, and so I want you to understand when we talk about this word revival, it's kind of a churchy word, but it's not scary. You know what revive is. If you've, if you've asked Jesus in your heart, you know what I'm talking about. You come alive. I remember being dead. And I remember what that was like, but I remember the moment God got a hold of my life and he shook me up and he threw me out and I looked way different. And he said, that is what I'm talking about. That's what I want you to come back to. I want you to come back to your first love. So when you talk about coming back to that root word, revive, the literal definition is to become active and flourishing again. So which one is it? Do you need to come back to your first love, get revived, shake up a little bit, or do you need to know God? Because I believe... God brought you here for one of two reasons. I'm Brandy Keith, and I'm the Life Group Pastor here at uh, MMC, and I'm really, really excited to give you guys the message this morning. We're, uh, thank you, um, one, two people. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm really excited. We're launching a brand new series today. It's called Shake the Earth. And through this series, we're going to be talking about the different elements of revival and what that might look like and what God might want to do this year. So I'm super excited. It's based on the scriptures in Hebrews 12, 26. And it says, when God spoke, it shook the earth, but he's ready to do it again. He's ready to shake the earth again. And the reason he's going to do it is so that what's shakeable is going to go away and what's Anything else is, is what's worth living for, right? I kind of try to break things down because that's where I live, okay? But you know what? We're watching this shaking happening. We're watching things shaking and unraveling, and it's, it's, it's kind of unnerving. If you don't know what's happening, God's shaking things up because he loves his people. He loves people. He loves people whether they know him yet or not. He loves them, and he's shaking things up, and he's, he's messing up the natural because he wants to get into their lives. He wants to get into their world, and that's what he might be doing for us because he needs to shake us up. He's got plans for us, and he wants us to come alive in him, and guess what? We don't get the chance to say when revival's going to happen. That's God's job, but we do get the opportunity to be ready for it. And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning. I want to talk to you about how to come alive in prayer to get ready for what God wants to do next. 
And so you, the first uh, point, if you guys are note takers, is it starts with you. Revival starts with you in personal prayer. Personal prayer. How many of you, that makes you nervous? Okay, thanks for the honesty, maybe one. Okay, so all of you guys are prayer warriors in here. I totally get it. We're all on board. Okay, great. Um, but in case you're not, in case you're wondering, okay, what does that look like for me? If you want to be part of revival, it starts with your personal prayer. And they gave a great uh, acrostic there at C3, and I just thought, man, this is so good. And so he called it the self-check. And I just, I have to tag this. It's corny and it's great, but you better check yourself before you wreck yourself, right? So maybe that'll help you uh, remember that as you walk out of here. But we're gonna do a self-check. So personal prayer starts with you checking yourself first thing in the morning. So we're gonna break these down, uh, this self, and, w- and we're gonna break this down and see what it looks like. But basically the S means, this means you surrender. You're going to surrender a portion of your day. The first thing you do when you step out of your bed is say, God, I surrender a moment of my day before I started and I'm gonna surrender it to you. That's the first step of you getting into a personal prayer life because your prayer life's not gonna happen on accident. It's gonna be intentional. It's gonna be you deciding that you wanna spend some time with God and it's gonna be weird. If you've never spent any time with God, you don't know what to expect and that makes you a little nervous and I'm completely, I gotcha. But you know what? It's not a scary place. You have to decide. It's probably important, so I need to surrender some time. Number, uh, letter E, excuse me. Uh, Letter E is just empty yourself. And I love this because this is so the heart of God. He so knows us. He knows that we've got anxiety. He knows that we've got some things on our list that we can't get out of our brains yet. And so he just wants you to empty himself, empty yourself. And so this is my time where I've already, I mean, I'm, I'm, when I get up, it's not whether I feel like it, I'm going to spend time with God because there's challenges that I'm going to face that day that I don't know what to do with. So I'm going to go make sure I surrender my time with God. But then I got to empty myself. God, if you want the fool me, I got to bring all my junk too. Because here's what I'm thinking about this morning. And so I got to just empty it. And I just go down the list. God, please take care of my kids. You know they need you, okay? I need you to know that, okay? And that's on my heart. And he knows the list of what's already on your mind. And so, God, you got to take care of this. And maybe maybe this is going to happen today and it's making me a little nervous. See, the fact is, is God knows all of the things on your mind already. But we are so, I don't know the word, maybe nervous. We don't know how to be honest with the Lord. And that makes us a little nervous because really, honestly, I think I should have it all together when I come to God. And that's really not it at all. God knew we we were a mess and he wants us to come broken. Because the fact is, is we can't fix ourselves, and that's why he died on the cross for us. God knew that there was nothing that we could do, and you need to know this. There's nothing that you can do that God's not going to accept you for. If you screwed up, go back to him. Empty yourself out. Because that's what he wants from you. He does not need a perfect vessel. He needs a willing vessel. And you need to get that out of your mind, that you're not good enough to come to the Lord in personal prayer. God needs you to just surrender yourself and come to him and empty yourself out. Give him all your cares and your worries. Give him everything because he knows you can't be right with him until you just get it all out. That's, that's the way I roll. And then this is the most greatest part. You just got to love on him. And that seems weird because what does that mean? Well, to me, it looks like kicking on a worship song. And when I say worship, I mean, you go get some elevation. You go get some Maverick City. You go get some Carrie Job. Those people know how to touch heaven. Those people have already accessed the presence of God for you. You just need to step in. All you need to do is turn it on. And so I love this about this part of my time and surrendering to God is because when I'm tired, this is a great part for me. I could just lay my phone on my pillow beside me, lay my head down and be like, all right, Lord, you speak. And so I'm just laying there on my pillow. I've already emptied myself out, all my worries and carries. Now that's a time for you to shut up. That's a time for you to stop your brain from trying to figure out how you're going to do your day. That's a time for you to just like, I'm right here in the moment with you, Lord. This is you. Thank you, Lord. This is my time to love on you. Thank you for being here with me. You may not even know he's there. Thank you that you're going to show up. Thank you that you're with me. Thank you that you love me. And you may not even believe any of that, but it's true. And the fact is, is you won't start to believe those things until you start doing a self-check every morning. And so this time when you're just listening to the words, stop your brain, stop it. You don't got it all figured out. 
neither do I. God does. And so just have this moment with the Lord where you're just listening. And just listen to the words of the song. You know, most often God is speaking through those lyrics. Those are, those are Bible verses. Those are different things. God is speaking and moving. And so just listen. But I want to challenge you even further. It's like a, a portion of you just needs to just like step in and lean in a little closer. And just, it's like the inner part of your ear. And you just like, you just start to listen a little bit more intently. Just listen for his voice because he will speak to you. And it may not be like a whole lot. It may just be one or one, one or two words because that's how God does it. But, but when he does speak, it will mean something to you and it will change your world. And I promise you, when you get up from that time, it'll be different, but you can't get up yet because next you got to fill up with him. See, this self-check is all about your time with the Lord in prayer is all about being with him, emptying yourself out, you know, like listening to him, getting into worship, but it's not all about worship. You cannot stop there because how many of you want God to tell you what to do? Give me some wisdom. Like, give me some answers. Like I'm broken. Any broken people in here? Me, me. I need some answers. I need that. If you really want God to speak to you, he speaks through his word. If you want to hear God audibly, read it out loud. Because that's what he does is he speaks through his word. If you want some answers, God talks through his word. So it's not just enough for you to listen to worship music. It's a start and it's great. You need to set the tone. God's presence comes in through worship. You need to set your attitude and your heart right before him. But then you need to listen for the Lord and his word. And you know what? You may not understand everything. It's okay. That's okay. You got to start somewhere. But I promise you, God will honor the time that you make for him. You will walk away with something. And so maybe you don't know what to read. Um, what I love about it is our church does a Bible plan now, and it's constant. It's ongoing. So just jump on board. Go check out our online campus. Jo Pastor Josh and Jana do an amazing job. But they invite us to a Bible plan. And when that one starts, stops, there's already one starting up. So just jump on the U version, download that, and join the MMC church. And then you will get involved in the Bible plan reading that we're doing. But you've got to fill up on him. If you want a word from God, if you want to know how to navigate life, it's found in his word. And God is so practical. God is so good. I mean, I'm not walking away one day where I've done the self-check and I'm like, that was a total waste of time. It just doesn't happen. Like, I'm like, God, that was so great. Like, I needed to know that. I needed peace in my spirit about my child today. I needed peace about God walking into work today because I do not know what that crazy person's going to do today. You know, I just need to know some specifics, and God knows what's on your mind already. I was listening to a song this morning, and it says that the songs, the words said, you go before and win my war before I even knew there was a war. And I love it because he's my defender. He's my defender. Before you ever knew that God loved you and had a purpose and a plan for you, he's already going before you and planning your day. He's already going before you and winning your wars. All you have to do is realize it. So when we're doing a self-check, you got to be intentional about that. But also, it takes time to build relationship. I love this. You know, a lot of times we like to come to church and be like, I'm good, we're good. That's awesome. That's awesome. I wish my life was that good. It's not that good. I need Jesus every day. And it gets, takes time to build relationship, but it's kind of weird, you know? I'll never forget um, when God laid on my heart that I was going to, you know, maybe marry my husband. <laughs> maybe he didn't tell me that, but he did put him in my mind, and I knew very vividly because I never talked to the guy. So I was like, hmm, it's interesting because I wasn't praying for a man, okay? Do you realize that? Because <laughs> I don't need them. <laughs> But when I actually uh, just said hi to my husband for the first time, I was part of the greeter team. I made myself a greeter because I just, you know, we didn't have that. And I wanted to make sure people felt welcome. Um, so I just went up to him and I reached out my hand and I said, hey, good morning. And he looked at me and looked at my hand and did this number. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> maybe God hasn't spoke to you yet. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. God's going to get a hold of you. He's told me. So <laughs> um, now, but after time, after I built a relationship and uh, wait, sorry. Whew. I'm glad I didn't fall down. <laughs> Embarrassing. Um, after I built some relationship with him, after I'd spent some time and some, some getting to know him and kind of like just conversations, it was like, 
before he asked me to marry him, he told me, he's like, I actually did like you back then. I was like, what's not to like, right? <laughs> Super weird and awkward. That's right up your alley right there. It's awesome. Um, but he's like, no, I thought you were cute. And I'm like, I am cute. <laughs> You just didn't tell me. (laughs) But anyway, um, after months and months, this is what he'll tell you. I finally, or he finally said yes. That's pretty accurate, right? Anyway. But anyway, uh, it's about relationships. So you have to just kind of go back and you start working on that relationship with the Lord. So even if it's super awkward and you don't know what you're doing, that self-check will help you. And I promise you the enemy will lie to you and tell you that it's, it's not worth your time or that God doesn't want you to do this or that you're not worthy. There ain't none of us that are worthy. Not one. Every single day I have to wake up and be like, I am good. I am chosen. I am called by God. I am, I am the head and not the tail. You start speaking the things that you know are true over you because the enemy tells you enough lies. You need to remind yourself of what is true, but that self-check will help you um, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Amen? Okay. That's going to help you. Um, But we also have to learn um, as you develop this prayer is you got to learn how to sit with Jesus even in the difficult seasons of life because that is the hard part. It's like, oh, we're Christians. Everything's perfect. That's a lie. That's a lie because we live in the real world and life is tough. And the fact is, is sometimes God shakes things up in the natural and throws it out and says, now, will you walk with me? Will you walk with me through this messy situation because there's something I want to show you? So when God starts making challenges in your life and you've walked in with problems, you're in good company because I promise you there's a lot of us that have problems, that have challenges, have real life challenges. But sometimes when God starts shaking things up in your life and he starts throwing them out and it looks messy and it looks impossible, God wants to get your attention. He wants to show you that there's way more than just you working through this. And this is so cool, but prayer is actually an opportunity for you to realize that there's a heaven and there's a God and he's on your side. And that's so often we get uh, so fixated in our own natural world and we don't realize how much God is up to in our own lives. He's already preparing stuff. It says before you were ever born or formed in your mother's womb, God had a plan and a purpose for you. If you don't believe it, go read the word of God in Psalms and it'll tell you that. I promise you there's nothing by accident or mistake about you. But even in your challenges, you may feel like it's impossible. You may even feel worthless at this situation. But I promise you there's nothing that God can't redeem. There's nothing that God can't change or do different. And I promise you, it's going to take you getting into surrender with him. So don't run from challenges. Don't run from awkward situations. You've got to learn to sit with him. And you've got to learn to sit with him in the uncomfortableness. And I feel like our trip to C3, you know, I, I love C3. We've been going for so many years. I love it. My kids went this year. I just totally, you know, was just doting over them for making time to go and different things. But C3 was challenging. Even like we took a couple days on vacation, what I thought was vacation, and we were going to go down and just spend some time. And it was a great time. But I felt like God was doing this with me. He was shaking me up. He was shaking me up and says, well, what if that doesn't happen? What if he doesn't come home? What if they become addicted? What if, and you just go down the list of things, of your what ifs, because you know what it means for you. What if my job doesn't work out? What if they lay me off? What if my marriage doesn't work out? What if he doesn't come home? What if she doesn't love me anymore? What if they're talking to somebody else? What if, what if, what if, you know? And I just feel like, man, that was just, I mean, it was so real. I know what temptation is like. I know what, what challenge, like, um, um, attacks are like from the enemy. And those are real things, but this was so real. And I was just like, God, what are you doing? And God says, I want you to sit with me, even in the uncomfortable. And see, that is so challenging because a lot of times we want to run. When things get challenging and you know that you can't fix them and you're not the one that's going to be the one that's going to be the savior, it's super hard to sit with God in those situations. And so you're, you want to flight, you know, you want to, you want to flight out of there. You, you don't want to go to God in prayer. That's not a time that you want to be sensitive with the Lord. You're like, God, you're not answering my prayer. You could change this situation right now and you're not doing it. And God says, I want you. 
to learn to be okay with it. Not the situation, but will you trust me through it? And that's where I just came to a place of like, all right. Okay. I'm going to learn to sit with you. He said, if you don't learn to sit with me, you're not going to learn how you're going to navigate this next season. And I was like, okay. So when we have these uncomfortable situations, don't run from God. Sit with him in them because he wants to show you something. He showed me this verse um, in Hebrews 12, 28, and it goes right along with that shaking passage. And he said, since we're inheriting a kingdom that cannot be shaken, you better hold on to grace. And that's what I love because I felt like God was telling me, Brandy, don't you realize that there's nothing that you can go through that my grace has not already been enough for? Don't you realize that there's nothing that you're going to walk through that I'm not going to walk right through there with you for it? Don't you have any faith yet? Don't you know that I'm in your boat? Don't you know that I would never leave you or forsake you? Don't you know? And if you don't know, that's what I love about groups. Get into one. Let some people surround you and remind you what is true. But I tell you what, you need to surrender in some personal time of prayer because God will start speaking those things to you. And what I told my kids about C3, I said, I'm so glad that you're making time to go. I'm so glad because, you know, for, for their lives, it's crazy and hectic like most of ours, but they were carving out time to be in the presence of God. So I applaud you for being here this morning because that's what this is about. Breakthrough. This is about seeking God's face. This is about getting a ready word. This is about being refreshed. And I was like, I'm so proud of you because God wants to fill you back up. But here's the deal. I could tell you that, but it's not going to be the same until God tells you. And that's why revival starts with your personal prayer. You've got to hear it for yourself. And it's only going to happen when you learn to sit with him. Sit with him in the good times sit with him in the bad times. When it's not going so great and you don't know what the heck you want to do and you want to be mad, you come to him and you be mad. You come to him and you're like, God, I don't like the way that this is going. This is not what I thought. I don't want this to happen. God, can you, you can change this. You, it just does not have to roll like this. This is not the way that it should be. But if it doesn't, you are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. God will not move on you. He will not break when you lean on him. You're okay in the presence of the Lord. You're okay in his arms and he's going to wrap you up and he's going to remind you of what is true. And whatever he's trying to teach you or whatever he's trying to use your testimony through, God will be glorified. Amen? God will be glorified. God is in control always. And that's what you need to understand. When we come into a time of personal prayer, it's you get to realize that heaven is on your side. You're not by yourself. You're not alone. You've never been alone one day in your life. You just didn't realize it. And personal prayer is your opportunity to realize how, God, how close God is. God loves you and he wants to awaken your heart so that you can know the seasons and the times. And that's what I love the most is when you spend personal time in prayer, God will show you things. God will give you insight to what's going to happen. You know, like he showed me my husband and clearly he hadn't prayed yet. So it was good. But God is moving. God is up to something. He's shaking things up so that he can stir things up and move, wake us up and start a revival. And so I love that we're about to go see Jesus revolution because that is not by happenstance or chance. That is so awesome on God's timetable. You know what? God's so perfect in his time. I don't know if that was a word that you needed, but I promise you God's not forgotten. He's never late, but he's never early. He's right on time. And that's annoying as all heck. <laughs> I've told him that. I'm like, that, you could just speed it up. That's, that's ridiculous. Um, but no, it's not by chance. I was doing some research on this movie. This movie has been in production for six years. And then here on the seventh year, perfect and complete is what seven is. It's rolling out, ready to be revealed. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, God, what are you doing? You know, because I remember seeing this preview back in December and I'm like, okay, God, what's, what's next? What are you doing? What's, what's about to come out? Because God will show you some things. He'll give you insight. He won't tell you everything, but he will give you some insight when you learn to sit with him in personal prayer. And I love that because I need to know some things. Um, but one of the things I love, a character in the movie said, people have always been searching for God. 
They've just been looking for it in all the wrong places. Amen? Amen. Happiness, success, popularity, fulfillment, all of those things, they just didn't know they were in the name of Jesus. And I, one of the things uh, Greg Laurie had talked about and one of the things I read, Greg Laurie is one of the producers, he said, we were doing a baptism scene in that uh, movie and um, he said one of the uh, people that were getting baptized actually gave his life to the Lord right there. And he came back and he's talking to Greg Laurie and he said, hey, I think I just got saved. He was like, awesome, dude, that's awesome. And he's like, can I get baptized for real? He's like, absolutely. So they went and baptized him. So I just think that's amazing because we get the opportunity next Wednesday to go see this movie, Jesus Revolution. And that is not by accident or coincidence because here's at our opportunity. This is an easy invite, guys. It's not about just our church people going to see a movie, okay? This is an evangelistic outreach. And what that means is go get your friends and bring them. The ones that you know that won't come to church, bring them to this movie and, and, the, and just jump on the website an app and register them so we can have enough tickets. But this is an easy invite. Just invite them to come see this movie with you. They're going to maybe know who Jesus is. I promise you everybody is searching for something and they just don't know what they're searching for. They're searching for healing. They're searching for hope and they're searching for something and they just don't know it's in the name of Jesus. So this is really, really cool. This movie is an opportunity for us to be a tool to be used. It's so easy. Invite a lost friend. And if you don't have one, you better make it your goal this week to get us outside your box because God wants to shake us up. It's not about us sitting in this church and having a revival and our hands spread open. It's for us to catch fire of what God is doing, a realization of what he's doing so that we can go out and spread the fire. You know, if you've ever watched a wildfire, it's not, it doesn't stay contained, does it? It sets fire to dry grass and then it goes and catches and just takes off, does it not? I don't like to be a part of those fires, but I've set a few in my life. Um, but that's what we need to be as believers, as, as church people. If we receive Jesus, he puts his Holy Spirit in us. We should come alive, come alive. And you know, I don't think it's by accident or circumstance or coincidence actually that our prayer and fasting is coming up. Everybody loves prayer and fasting, right? Yes, everybody loves that. So let me explain what fasting is. Fasting is giving up something that you love for something you love even more, and that's Jesus. So you're going to give up something, and you're just going to be uncomfortable, and it should make you squirm. And if it doesn't, you haven't chose the right thing. <laughs> so if it's, you know, you are scrolling 90 to nothing on TikTok, give up TikTok. Oh, my gosh. I know. That's what fasting is. But here's, here's the thing. If you really want breakthrough in your life, or if you're praying for somebody that really needs to know Jesus, you better know the signs and the time, and God wants them to know him. He is moving in such a way that he is going to shake the earth. He wants people to come alive and, and have a relationship with him. So this is our time corporately to come together and pray. So point number two, if you want revival, revival like corporate worship and, or corporate prayer is the key to revival. So that's point number two. It's all about us coming together and praying. So get on board with our fast. And maybe you've never fasted before. Find a friend because it's easier. <laughs> um, but, you know, we challenge you to give up um, two. Well, to be honest, we give up two meals a day from Wednesday to Friday. And we um, sacrifice those to spend with the Lord. If you can't do two, do one. Or if you can't do food, do some social media platform or whatever it is that you feel like God is calling you to. But whatever you're doing during that time, spend that time with the Lord and just read the Bible plan that we're going to do together. And I promise you, do that self-check and it will change things. Surrender your time. Decide that you're going to fast with us. It's going to get you out of your comfort. But I promise you, this year is going to be uncomfortable. And it's not going to look like what you thought. And it's going to be okay because God's in control. God's always in control. When a shaking happenings, it's him. And he wants to shake people up because he loves them so much. He wants them to come alive in him. So empty yourself. That, that's fasting right there. Is It's enough of you. Get involved in what he's doing. And the L is just love on him. I know that's hard because you're cranky crack when you're fasting. But love on him. Listen to some worship. And then fill up. 
Read your Bible plan and let God speak to you. I promise you, it will be encouraging to you. Um, as we're kind of wrapping up today, there was um, something that God kind of laid on my heart, you know, and it was um, the book of Acts chapter 2, and he was uh, talking about... Um, Pentecost, if you guys have been in the church world, it just meant that was a time that God met them. But right before that, you know, the story of Jesus didn't die just because he died. He came alive. He came alive, and that's why we're sitting here today is because we have new life in him when we choose to believe in him. And the fact is, is what, what, what happened is his followers took lead after that and took charge and started basically fasting and praying and waiting. And what happened during that time, and, and, and that was the mandate that God gave them. He said, hey, uh, I'm going to leave, but I want you guys, I'm going to give you a gift, but stay here and pray and wait. Pray and wait. Pray and wait. And they're like, got it. Okay, there he goes. Oh, gosh, what are we waiting for? Like, pray and wait for what? What are we doing? And I think that that's kind of what we're asking ourselves. What is revival? What are we doing? Pray and wait. Pray and wait. And that was the same thing that God was doing with them. And what were they waiting on? Acts 1.8 said they were waiting on power. They were waiting on the power and the presence of God to fall. And so that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. They were praying and waiting. And what happened? God showed up. And that's what we're doing as we're talking about revival, we're talking about awakening. That's what God wants us to do is to prepare our hearts, to prepare our hearts for him, to pray and wait, to seek, seek his face, to come back to a heart of worship. And so we're going to take this moment, if you guys will bow your heads with me. I just had told you there was two reasons God brought you here this morning. It's either to awaken, to shake up your soul, and for you to catch a glimpse, to have a fresh revival with him, just an awakening for you to come to know what he's doing in this time and, and season. I promise you God's up to way more than you can probably understand or think because that's always the way that he rolls. So maybe you just need to come back to your first love and get involved in what he's doing because it's never about us just soaking up in the presence of God. It's always a call to action. God said, pray and wait and then go. And so I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to search your hearts, get shaken up, Come back to your first love. Figure out what this is about. It's not about, it's not about you. It's not about us. It's about what he's doing. It's about his church. It's about his church being full. It's about his people being lost and broken and needing you to talk to them. But then maybe it's you that came in this morning and you got invited by somebody or however it is that you came here. I want you to know God's shaking things up in your world because he wants you to know him. There's not one part of him that wants you to miss what he's doing. And he brought you here on purpose. And he might have given you a challenge or some kind of thing that you can't solve. Because he wants you to meet him. Everybody's looking for something. They just don't know it's Jesus. And I promise you, you can search and search and search. And nothing's going to fill you like Jesus does. So maybe that's you in this place and you are just like feeling God tugging on your heart and you just are like, I don't know what to do. Surrender. Give it up. You're done. I promise you, you don't know what's waiting on the other side of surrender. So right now in this moment, if you will just slip up your hand and say, yeah, I need that. Just raise up your hand. Nobody's looking around. It's just me and Jesus. Just want to know who I'm praying for. Thank you. Thank you. I promise you, you're not going to regret this. This is going to be the best decision you've ever made because you don't have to walk this life alone. You were never alone. God's always been with you, but now you can know it for yourself. So I want you to pray something simple like this, and we're going to pray together because no one stands alone. We're going to pray, dear Jesus, Father, thank you for bringing me here this morning. God, I've messed up. I've rebelled against you, and I've done things my own way. But God, I ask for your forgiveness. I want what you've got. Forgive me of my sins, Lord. Come into my life and come alive in me. In Jesus' name, amen.